Welcome, y'all. This is page 11 of the Unit 2 homework packet. Today in class, we learned about the electromagnetic spectrum, and this is the electromagnetic spectrum right here. So we start at radio waves, and we go all the way up to gamma rays. So gamma rays, we're talking about dangerous ionizing radiation. So they're very high energy. Over here, radio waves, we're talking about very, very long waves that are safe. They're not going to hurt us. So you can always think of that as microwaves don't hurt us, but ultraviolet rays, that's like skin cancer and x-rays, these are the high energy, okay? So some vocab that we need to review. Wavelength, it's the length between the repeating segments of the waves, so from crest to crest like this. So over here you can see that's a very long wavelength, which means a big wavelength. Over here we're talking about very little wavelength, okay? So that's why I drew in these blue arrows. So it goes from high wavelength down to low wavelength. And frequency is how often it happens. So if all of these are moving at the speed of light, they're all moving at the same speed, something like this is going by much more often. It's going to hit you more often. So frequency and wavelengths have to be opposite of each other. So as wavelength gets smaller, frequency gets bigger. Okay? And we'll talk about that again in just a second. For waves, as a property of waves, Energy is dependent on frequency. So that means if you have a higher frequency, like gamma rays, it has higher energy. It's more dangerous. And that's what we call a direct relationship because they go in the same direction. Energy and frequency go up together or they go down together. So that's a direct relationship. Conversely, we can talk about inverse relationships. So this is like wavelength and frequency. If you have a long wavelength, like this, you have a long wavelength, it's not going to go by very frequently. Versus if you have a low wavelength, a small wavelength like this, it's going to pass much more frequently. You repeat more frequently. So that's inverse because one's inverted, right? Like if you're doing a trick on a snowboard, you invert, you go upside down. So they're inversely related, wavelength and frequency are, and a direct relationship between energy and frequency. So that kind of vocab stuff to review or to get if you were absent is going to help us do the rest of this. So which wave above has the greatest wavelength? Okay, so our choices are radio wave, microwave, infrared waves, visible light, ultraviolet light, x-rays, or gamma rays. So my greatest wavelength, I'm showing you right here, that's the biggest wavelength. There's the longest distance before it starts repeating, so I would say radio waves. That's where I have the greatest wavelength. Now it's asking me which one has the greatest frequency. So this one doesn't repeat very frequently. But over here, we've got lots of repeating stuff. So greatest frequency will be over here for gamma rays. Then it says, which would you predict to have the greatest energy? And again, we just said energy is dependent on frequency for waves. So we can think of greatest energy is most dangerous. Which one's going to have the most energy and be most harmful to us? That's gamma rays too. Okay, so these ones are going to go together in the same direction. Gamma. Okay, so if they go together in the same direction, up together or down together, energy and frequency have a direct relationship. They go in the same direction. Where wavelength and frequency are inverted. They're opposite of each other. So we call that inverse. We will use these terms again, direct relationship and inverse relationship, when we get to our gas laws unit. So definitely that's worth your time to know now. Number six. Here's a good example of a quiz question. Which of the following is true about frequency and wavelengths? Wavelength is constant for all frequencies. So that means wavelength doesn't change when frequency does. That's definitely not true. As wavelength increases, frequency increases. Okay, that's true for energy and frequency up here, but not for wavelength and frequency, so I would say no. As wavelength increases, frequency decreases. Yeah, that looks good. And then this one says wavelength and frequency are independent, and that's not true. There's a relationship, so I can say C is our answer. In order for frequency to get bigger, Wavelength would have to get smaller. They're inverted, inversely related. Try these two on your own. 
So let's look at this one. Frequency and blank have an inverse relationship. Frequency and color, no, we're not talking about that. Frequency and energy, yeah, that sounds right. Inverse, okay. Frequency and wavelength, ooh, that sounds right. Frequency and speed, that's nonsense. Okay, now we've got to be careful between these two. Energy depends on frequency. So they go up together or down together. That's a direct, in the same direction, not an inverse. So I don't want to pick that one. Inverted means one up, one down. Inverse, inverted. That one's wavelength. They're opposite of each other. So here's a fantastic star question or ACT question or kind of pre-AP, whatever, AP test question. You've got a bunch of information and it looks scary and people want to quit, but we're not going to quit. If a certain wave is found to have a wavelength of 600 nanometers and a frequency of that, 500 THC, we don't need to worry about that, what color, that's what they're asking me, would you expect? All right, so now we need to figure out on this graph where those numbers fall. So here's saying my wavelength, red is 620 to 750, orange would be 590 to 620. So my 600 nanometers would be right in there. Frequency for 500, that's not big enough. 500 would fall right in there. So what color? Orange. Okay, so this problem might look intimidating, but all we're doing is plotting those points on this little graph. Okay, that was it.